Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we talked about cache design and there we talked a little bit about various cache replacement policies. However, we didn't go into the details of those. So as promised, from this session onwards, we will be discussing about various cache replacement policies, starting with random replacement, first in first out, last in first out, and finally, the optimal cache replacement policy. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Now in the previous session, during our discussion of cache design, we came across the block replacement phase. Basically, it's required when the cache suffers from either capacity or conflict miss. In any of these two scenarios, we evict one block from the cache and make space for the newly requested block. Now during this phase, we came across a very vital question which was, which block to replace? Now for direct mapping, if we observe closely, suppose these are the main memory blocks and these are the cache lines. Basically, we have 16 main memory blocks and 4 cache lines. Now suppose the processor requests the main memory block number 14. Now if you remember, since the main memory block number 14 in binary is 1110, in that case, the least significant 2 bits will determine where inside the cache the main memory block will be mapped onto. And since the least significant 2 bits are 1, 0, therefore, the main memory block number 14 will be placed inside the cache line number 2. Now suppose the processor now is asking for the main memory block number 6. In this case, also if you observe, the least significant 2 bits of the block number is 1, 0. Therefore, the main memory block number 6 will also be mapped onto the cache line number 2, replacing 14. And the same will happen if the processor asks for the block number 2 and the block number 10. Therefore, in terms of direct mapping, all the main memory blocks have their cache line specified. So for block replacement, no need for any decision to make, since it's pretty straightforward in case of direct mapping. On the contrary, in case of associative and set associative mapping, a particular main memory block can be placed anywhere inside the cache if it is associative. And if it is set associative, the main memory block can be placed anywhere inside a particular set. Therefore, for block placement, we have availability of choices. Therefore, for block replacement, we will be needing cache replacement policies since unlike direct mapping, the cache line is not specified for a particular main memory block in any of these two cases. Now, having cache replacement policies actually help us reduce the cache misses. Since once the newly requested block is placed inside the cache, during its future reference, it will be found inside the cache itself, resulting in cache hit. This will also help minimize the miss penalty. Now, miss penalty refers to the time required by the processor to get the data from the next level of memory hierarchy during the cache misses. Therefore, with the reduced number of cache misses, the miss penalty is bound to be minimized. Therefore, the cache replacement policies are required for associative and set associative mapping, not in case of direct mapping. Now, let's talk about the various cache replacement policies, shall we? During our previous discussion, we did mention about the different cache replacement policies. Now, regarding recency-based and the frequency-based policies, we will discuss in the next session. Today, we are going to discuss about the random replacement, the first in first out and the last in first out and finally the optimal replacement policies. So let's begin with random replacement. Now in this specific case, we choose the block to be evicted from the cache at random. Therefore, the access information is not really required, which is actually required by most of the other cache replacement policies. And finally, it's not really implemented anymore, it used to be implemented in advanced risk machine architectures. We will talk about risk architectures in our upcoming sessions. Now this is the core concept of random replacement. Now the next replacement policy is FIFO. Here the cache blocks are evicted in their order of arrival. Basically, the cache behaves as a first in first out queue. That means, Whichever block comes the first will be evicted from the cache first. Now let's understand this with the help of an illustration. Suppose we have a fully associative cache with four different lines. And initially the cache is empty. Now since it is fully associative, for the first four block requests, the cache will be filled as this. 
Now at this point, the cache is full. Now suppose at this point, the processor requests for a new block. In that case, the block which got placed inside the cache if at first will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block. Now after the block is placed, the cache will again become full. Now at this point, if the processor again asks for a new block, in that case, amongst all the blocks present inside the cache, whichever got placed inside the cache at first will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block. Also after this, the cache will again become full. So this is how the first in first out or the FIFO cache replacement policy works. Now let's solve a question related to this concept for better understanding. Consider this question. Consider a fully associative cache memory with four lines that implements first in first out cache replacement policy for the following block requests. Now there are some block requests mentioned. Now we have to find out the miss and the hit ratio respectively. So let's try to solve it. Now it's mentioned that the cache has four lines. And for cache replacement, the first in first out cache replacement policy is used. Now since it's a fully associative cache, that means there is no restrictions about placing the main memory blocks inside the cache. Therefore, for the first four block requests, the cache lines will be filled like this. That means the main memory block number two will be placed inside the cache first, followed by the main memory blocks number three, four and seven. Now during the turn of main memory block number 6, the cache is full. And here for cache replacement, we need to perform the first in first out rule. That means amongst all these main memory blocks placed inside the cache, we are to evict the one which got inside the cache at first. That is the block number 2 will be evicted and make space for block number 6. Now the next block request is the block request 3. It will be a cache hit. And the same will follow in case of block request 4 and 7, both of them will be cache hits. Now during the block request number 5, the cache is again full, so we have to perform first in first out. Therefore, amongst all the blocks present inside the cache, the one which got placed inside the cache at first, that is the block number 3, will be evicted and make space for the main memory block number 5. Now thereafter, the block requests 4 and 7 will result in cache hits since they already are inside the cache. Now coming to block request 8, the cache is again full. So we again have to perform first in first out. That is, amongst all the blocks present inside the cache, the one which got into the cache at first, which is in this case block number 4, will be evicted and make space for the main memory block number 8. Now let's figure out the miss ratio. Now the miss ratio can be figured out by placing the number of misses upon total number of block requests and multiplying that value with 100%. Now there are 12 block requests altogether and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 misses. So multiplying 100% with 7 upon 12, we get 58.33%. And that is the miss ratio in this specific scenario. Now since the miss ratio is 58.33%, in order to find out the hit ratio, we take the miss ratio and subtract that from 100%, which will give us roughly 41.66%. So the hit ratio is 41.66% approximately, and the miss ratio is approximately 58.33%. Now if we observe closely, we encountered 7 misses. Amongst them, 4 were compulsory misses, that means the block request 2, 3, 4 and 7 were compulsory misses and the remaining 3 were capacity misses. Because if you remember during the turns of block request 6, 5 and 8, every time they got placed inside the cache, before that the cache was full. Therefore, these are capacity misses. Now let's talk about the next cache replacement policy that is LIFO. Now LIFO evicts the most recently added block. That literally means last in, first out. Basically, whichever block gets placed inside the cache at last will be evicted first. So in this case, the cache behaves like a stack. Now what's a stack? 
It's similar to these things which were referred to as plate bouncy things by our friend enthusiastic Parker here. Now let me show you how a LIFO works. Suppose we have a cache with four lines. Now since it is working as a stack, we have numbered the cache lines starting from zero at the bottom up until three at the top. And since it's a fully associative cache, we can place the main memory blocks inside the cache like this. That means the block number zero will be placed inside the cache at first followed by the block numbers three, four and nine. And at this point of time, the cache becomes full. Now if the processor requests a new block, in that case, the block number 9 which got placed inside the cache at last, according to FLIFO, will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block which is block number 1 in this case. And afterwards block number 1 is placed, the cache will again become full. At this point of time, if the processor requests another block, in that case, the block number 1 which got placed inside the cache at last will be evicted and make space for the newly requested block that is block number 5 which again will make the cache as full. And this is how LIFO works. Now next up is optimal replacement policy. This one evicts the block that won't be referred for the longest period of time in future. Now we are neither Dr. Strange nor Dr. Fate. Therefore, prediction of the block request is impossible. However, the working principle of the optimal replacement policy can be illustrated in pen and paper. So let me illustrate that with the help of these block requests. Suppose we have a fully associative cache with four lines. Now since it's fully associative, for the first four block requests, the cache lines will be filled like this. Now during the block request 6, the cache is already full. Therefore, in order to determine which of the cache block is going to be evicted, we need to look ahead into the future requests. And from these, we can easily determine that the block number 2 is not going to be used for the longest period of time. Therefore, block 2 will be evicted making space for the main memory block number 6. Now for the next 3 block requests, these will be cache hits as they are already present inside the cache. Now during the turn of block request number 5, the cache happens to be full again. Therefore, in order to determine which of the block inside the cache is going to be evicted, we'll need to look ahead inside the future block request so that we can determine that the block numbers 6 and 3 are not going to be used for the longest period of time in future. Now it's a tie, isn't it? Now in this kind of situations, we take first in first out as tiebreaker. That means among these two, whichever got placed inside the cache at first will be evicted. Therefore, the block 3 will be evicted and make space for the main memory block number 5. Now once 5 is placed, thereafter the block requests 4 and 7 will be again cache hits since they are already present inside the cache. Now coming to the block request number 8, the cache is again full. And since at 8, our streak of block requests ends and therefore we don't have anything to look ahead and thus all the elements inside the cache are good for eviction. Now if you observe, again it's a tie and for tiebreaker we use first in first out. So in that case, the block number 4 will be replaced and make space for the main memory block number 8. Now since the prediction of block requests is impossible, therefore it can't really be implemented. However, this is widely used as an efficiency measuring tool for real replacement algorithms. That means, since it produces the optimal outcome, it can be used as a tool for efficiency measuring for other replacement algorithms. Now it was proposed by L. A. Belladi in 1966 and that's why it is also known as Belladi's optimal algorithm. So this is the underlying concept of optimal replacement policy. Alright everyone, that will be all for this session. In this session, we learned about some of the cache replacement policies starting with random replacement followed by first in first out, last in first out and finally the optimal replacement policy which is also known as Belladi's optimal algorithm. In the next session, we will discuss about the recency and frequency based policies. So I hope to see you in the next one. 
थैंक यू ऑल फॉर वॉचिंग